There you go. Um, you know what? This is a person I've always been fascinated with, but I haven't uh, delved too much into his career. But do you know anything about Blowfly? Blowfly. Blowfly yeah. was knockoff. He was like a knockoff of um, a Rudy Ray Moore. Dolomite? Dolomite, yeah. Okay. I think he was Dirty one of his yeah, he had a lot of dirty raps. He did a lot of a lot of crazy shit. I think one of his biggest things was um, he had a court scene. Was that, was that him doing it? It come to judge. He did something. They, no, no, that's not him. No, I know who you're talking about though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was come the judge. Here come. Yeah, that was pygmy. Yeah, that was pygmy. But they had he, he had something like that. He would do stuff like that. He also did the dirty raps, just like Dolomite and um, Dolomite did. But he also had a couple of records. That he would uh, back then splice them was when you know before sampling came out, they would splice records together. Well, what about so and so and so? They would sing a song, oh, and, you know that kind of thing. But I don't remember a whole lot about it because he didn't really blow up that well. Yeah, yeah, interesting career, but yeah, it didn't go too well. That dirty rap thing was that that was nineteen eighty. That that feels like that had to be a kind of a big deal, kind of an early inspiration, pioneer and type shit. No, but it, it, it was and. It wasn't because 70s early 80s everything still had a line there was a line between um party music and r&b and soul if you went to blockbuster there was that blockbuster didn't carry um x-rated stuff if they did they had a very small selection and it really wasn't hardcore if you went to a video store to buy that uh, independent video store to buy to rent a video, they had a curtain, and the curtain was right behind, right next to the cashier booth, so they can keep keep track of who went and out, went in and out of the room back there. So you just couldn't do anything, and it was it was a different time, dude. Again, somebody was accountable to what was being put out in the public and who was, who consumed it. Right now, there is nobody accountable. The internet don't care. The YouTube don't care. They don't. They say, "Oh, we, we, we you have to be 18." Okay, the kid just gonna click yes. The fuck. So, you know, the back then there was a whole, a whole nother, um, a whole nother um, policing situation that kept things out of the hands of certain people, especially kids. Who was someone, because I've known you've told stories in the past, but who is someone that you shouldn't have been listening to as a kid, but somehow you got your hands on the record and you, you ended up listening to him anyway? Richard, Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. My mom and them, uh, my mama, they would talk about Richard Pryor. And here's something, you know, sometimes you can't just say, you're almost talking about certain things, make people more curious about it, especially if I walk into the room as a kid and you change the subject. Y'all was talking about right after you're laughing, right after you're laughing you're really laughing. hard, right? All of a sudden, I walk in the room, y'all change the subject, and then all of a sudden, I hear Richard Pryor. It was Richard Pryor, okay? And sometimes you go to the swap meet again. Swap meet has always been an outlet for um, bootleg material. There it is, Richard Pryor. This nigga's crazy. This nigga is crazy. Oh my god. Are you and it was with an ER, right? He would say with an yeah, ER, not with an A. Not, 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 not with the A. Bicentennial like, nigger. It wasn't, yeah, Bicentennial it wasn't with an A. Was... You're talking about what 76? So when you start, I'm 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 76, I was I was 18. Okay, so even before that though, even they would play Red Fox. They you know, they play all the kids gotta go to bed. And they'd be playing cards in the living room on a little little fold-out card table. Playing whatever they playing, bid whiz or blackjack sometime in my house or dominoes. And they put on the party, they call them party records. But the kids got to be in the bed. And Red Fox didn't really cuss till later on. Red Fox, would he always had any uh, any windows. He never cussed. He always insinuated certain things. He never cussed. Like, wa wash your ass, okay? Fuck. It's a donkey. Okay? Yeah, yeah, and he put a donkey and on the Okay. Then he say him whopping a donkey, or, or I love right. beaver, and it was like a beaver. So yeah, right. he have a new dog. He have a, a so called fud. If you can't rub, if you can't rub, uh, if you can't rub it, fuck it. <laughs> okay, shit like that. Okay, so he always left some room 
for interpretation. Pride, like, fuck that. We fucking. <laughs> we fucking. Big difference. Big difference. So, yeah, Doc, it was a, diff- it was a different. Did you ever get uh, to see Pryor? Yeah, man, I got to talk to Richard, man, a couple times, dude. Me and Unknown used to go down to the comedy store on Sunday nights and up in Hollywood. Nobody was shit back then. Jay Leno, Arsenio Hall, um, Eddie Murphy, he hadn't even made 48 Hours yet, okay? And you go to on Sunday nights at the um, comedy store in Hollywood on Sunset, if you hung out, all the black guys showed up. All the black guys showed up, and they would, they would do their shows. By 11 30, uh, 12 o'clock, Paul Mooney would come on and he would, he would kind of, not really host, but he would, all the black guys would show up. Okay. And I remember talking to Richard Pryor in the back room, just like I'm talking to my party in the studio right now. And I asked him to come to the club. And he was a real shy dude, man. He, he, he was not the same guy on stage. Oh, nah, man, you know, I would love to, man, but I got a movie coming out. And I don't know if my manager's going to let me do it. I mean, we had a conversation, dude. And that's, I mean, uh, I've talked to Eddie Murphy. I've talked to Arsenio Hall, Jay Leno. Um, uh, what's the name? A uh, late night guy, um, uh, David Letterman. All these cats. They would be at the. They would be at the uh, Comedy X store. Comedy Comedy um, Comedy store. Comedy store. And then later, a lot of them would end up in in, in a Lemur Park at uh, at uh, Comedy Comedy Act Theater with my boy Michael Williams. Damn, dude. Good stories, man. Pryor never came to that I knew of. He never came to Comedy Act. Did that by that time Robin was the man. And mm-hmm. all the we all I, we all had personal relationships. So you know, in the end, I, I was I laugh, I tell people I got more I got more relationships in comedy than I do in hip hop. Because I used to book them all. Every club I had, I had a comedy night. I had a, a lot of my I had booked Cat Williams before, before he was just a cat the hat. I booked Cat Williams before. Damn, dude. Yeah, well, that hour flew by, Lonzo. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to the man. Love the chat, fam, man. You guys keep it, keep it, uh, keep it going. Shout out to Marlon, Tyree D, Tony, ATK, Stem Radio, Rashard Cobb, Isaiah Edwards, Reppin' Magazine. Love you all, man. Be safe. Lonzo, hit him with that outro, man. For those who never heard of me, I'm the first one who put Dr. Dre in the surgery. Stuck Ice Cube in the freezer until he got cold on the eve after dark. 50-yard line to Super Bowl. In the movie Straight Outta Compton, they played me like a hater of rap. Don't believe that Hollywood bull because it was all cap. My history goes deeper than you will ever know. Just remember that NWA, that's for not without Alonzo. Peace, y'all. We out.